Okay. Well, hello, arm lifting fans. I am privileged here to be with one of the most talented and nicest people I've met throughout my journeys in this sport. Australia's top arm lifter, Luke Reynolds. Luke, welcome to the show. How are you? Good, mate. Thanks very much for having me, Ricardo. It's uh, I know you've been trying to trying to get me for a little while, so that's why I messaged you the other day and said, let's get it done this weekend. Yes, uh, since we are on opposite ends of the earth, it isn't the easiest to get the schedule <laughs> to line up. Yeah, so, right. um, yeah, well, hey, first of all, for the Americans or maybe rest of the world that doesn't know you like I know you, why don't you yep. give everyone a little bit of background on your – because you are a very interesting dude. You pursue a variety of strengths, a variety of jobs. Like, you've yeah. got it going on. So why don't you give the people a little background? Yeah, um, I'm Luke Reynolds. Uh, I've been in strength sports for 16 years now. Uh, pro strongman, pro heavy events, Highland Games, and now pro arm lifter. Uh, I'm a rural firefighter in the real world. Uh I've had a number of jobs over the years, uh, but yeah, I, I do rural firefighting now. Uh, I played rugby league, which is very similar to rugby, for 10 years before. That was sort of my sport growing up as a kid. It's it's the, the sport in the area that I live in. It's, it's probably the number one sport in Australia, uh, which gave me a great background for strength sports to move across. I've been lifting uh, because of rugby. Uh, I, I started lifting when I was about 10 years old. Um, I've competed around the world in, in strongman um and yeah now i'm doing the same thing with arm lifting thanks to you guys so yeah now it's, it's pretty cool uh well, and, and i'm an actor as well sorry another thing like you said i do lots of things uh i'm an actor as well so i do i do a lot of tv commercial stuff but um a lot of television and movies as well so yeah now it's, it's i do some pretty interesting things i guess yeah yeah like i said an interesting guy with a lot of interesting talents and you're good at all of them so um what was your impression of the Arnold Classic in 2023? Uh, just competing on that stage. Obviously, you've been around the world to compete. Yep. Uh, the quality of competition as well as just the 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 ambiance, the aura that had. What was your feeling on that? Yeah, look, it was great. Um, it, it was it was really cool to be part of it because obviously, you know, I've been watching um, the grip stuff over the years and, and while I was doing the Strongman Highland Games a lot, I'm sort of drifting back towards Highland Games now, but um, I've, I've always sort of looked at like the Mighty Mitts events and things like that at the Arnold and gone, man, I'd really love to be there one day because I knew my grip was good even in the Strongman world. Like I've always loved doing the big overhand axle lifts and, and those kinds of things. Um, and, and like a, a guy, uh, you know, a good friend of mine, Jeremy Hogg, he's a Kiwi, but he's always been Australian based as strong man, but he did a few of the mighty mitts and that sort of thing. And he was something of a mentor for me in the grip world. And I saw him do those events. I was like, I'd love to go to the Arnold one day. Well, for anything really like strong man would have been great, but you know, the arm lifting, the mighty mitts, you know, any of the grip stuff, I was like, I need to get into that. Cause I love watching, uh, Mike Burke do all those big lifts. And, and sort of it gave me these targets that I wanted to aim for. And then obviously you guys reached out and I uh, had that opportunity. So it was it was amazing to finally be on that stage. Be, I'd been to Arnold World Series events for the Strongman uh, all over the world, but I'd never been to the Arnold, you know, the Ohio Arnold, the original. So it was great to be there as a pro athlete. Um, as far as the contest itself, I think it was excellent. We had a, you know, having that stage there with the mass wrestling, like we, we had our, it was our own, own space, you know, it was really good. I think we got great exposure from that right near the Highland games. You know, it was a really good spot. Um, and as far as the talent on, on stage, it was, it was an extremely deep competition. I mean, like you said, leading in, we had the potential to have four or five guys go 500 plus on, on just the axle lift itself, which I don't think has ever been seen anywhere. And, and we ended up having three guys go over 500. Uh, and then, and you know, another guy at 220, like, um, what's that, 480 or something like, yeah, it, yeah. it was immense, yeah. immense lifting just in the axles. And you had huge Saxon lifts. Um, obviously, I was new to it. It was, it was amazing to be on the stage with, um, Obviously, the the goat, I guess, of, of arm lifting and, and grip with uh, Carl. I had a, had a bit of a brief chat to him the other day, and we're looking forward to next year's Arnold. Um, and but you know, then we had Kim Johansson, the the giant Swede, sort of come oh, out of 
almost nowhere and, and just blow it away, uh, taking the top top honours there. And then obviously very deep field with the Americans there, you know. So there was, you know, really anybody in the top five could have been could have been the winner that day, all things going well. And, you know, guys like Jason and Nick, um, it was great to share the stage with those guys as well. So, no, I loved it. And I'm um, like I said the other day, I'm, I'm coming back in 2024. I can't wait. Well, I might have some surprises for you, big guy. Um, I'm, <laughs> I can't, I can't release the events because I have a sponsorship and negotiation yeah. sep separate w with Rogue and with the Arnold organizers. But yeah. um, we we could have a very prominent location. Uh, yeah, lovely. There we go. Uh, yes, lovely. maybe maybe <laughs> more spotlights on Arm Lifting cool, USA. Cool, cool. That's yes. what we need, so, and that's what that's what we're building towards, right? We want to be, you know, right in the top mix there, which we should be because we have some of the greatest lifters of all time doing this stuff. So, well, you hit the nail on the head. We had eighty-five people over three days last year, and yep. it was an absolute fantastic show. Um, we're not going to see you at the Mister Olympia right now in a month, but we yep. have sixty-nine lifters over two days. That's up from forty-six that's last true. year. So yeah, that, um, that growth is immense, right? That that kind of growth in a sport is is huge in in one year. Well, fifty fifty percent, and at the world level, we have uh, we have uh, people from Canada, Finland, yep. Russia. We have our first person from South America, from Chile, Lovely. who's coming to lift with us. Oh yeah, Lovely. and he'll and he'll bring more. So I yep. think. Um, and there are some new guys that have just and girls that have just shown up out of nowhere, and right. um, they may make uh, maybe not quite like Kim Johansson, but they will <laughs> have an impact on the uh, yeah. medals in yeah, Orlando. And, and this is the um, this is the thing, right? Like I, I even when I spoke on stage at the Arnold, like you've seen some very talented athletes from different sports being, you know, they gravitating towards the arm lifting. Um, you know, like, well, myself coming across from Strongman, but then you've also got like Tom McClure is a former pro Strongman. Obviously, oh, yeah. Ode Haugen, World's Strongest Man competitor. Um, you know, Kim Johansson's a very talented Strongman athlete. You, uh, Carl goes without saying, you know, Olympia right. and, and all the rest of it. Yourself, a very talented thrower. Um, you know, and then in the girls, we had a very deep field in the pros where you had your, your arm lifting existing athletes that are excellent. But then you had a bunch of... Um, pro strong woman coming across like Anna and, and Gabby, like yeah. the field's insane. And then when you go down to the opens, you know, you had girls like Haley and that who have come across from volleyball oh. and they're elite. It's elite all the way down through. Right. And it's, it's very exciting to see these athletes being drawn across. Well, we've got some more female rock climbers that have come out of the woodwork for this. So they're yep. going to have some surprises. We have two flights of women's lifters. This you talk about growth. 25 right. women in Orlando and yep. and some of them I tell you what if you let them loose in an American high school and had them out deadlift with the boys <laughs> the, the the boys would not have a highlight reel I mean <laughs> these yeah, women nice. are strong yeah, it's it's exciting, there. right? It's, and, and that's the other that's the other funny thing right with grip stuff it's, it's sort of you get the two ends of the spectrum so you get you get these giant strong men, strong women athletes, and then you get rock climbers, right? right? Because they're the two sort of feeders, I guess, of the your, your main feeders. I think if you look at it across the board, of um, of grip athletes, because of the the similarities between the requirements, even though you're generally a smaller athlete versus a larger athlete, but then we all meet in the middle, and all things are equal in grip. Yeah. No, it's it's super exciting. It's fun to meet these yeah. people. I, I tell them when they they because my phone is ringing nonstop yeah. about how to how to sign up, how to join up, and I'm like, oh, right. send me a video with blue fat grips, or oh, what else do you have? Send me some kind of send me something, and yeah. then invariably I'm like, wow, you need to sign <laughs> up. You know, yeah. they 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 don't even know what they're doing, and they're phenomenally strong. And that's one thing I think with your videos I would like you to touch on uh, can you be too strong Luke you train regular deadlift you just put a post up about re uh inventing your squat technique yep. can you talk about the over I know the answer already but can you tell our viewers yep. what your feeling on overall strength is um, well, you can't be, and that's the post. And you and I have discussed this in the past, and we discussed it, I think, in person. Um, 
some there's some people out there with immense hand grips um and and strength in their forearms and hands but the limiting factor for them them on the on the on the i guess the overall heavier lifts like like the axle lifts is their body strength lets them down like they could hang on to literally anything um, right if they can't deadlift 500 pounds no matter what their hands can do they're not going to be pulling a 500 pound axle deadlift so then, no, um, sir. You, you can't be too strong and strength that you know as the cliched saying goes is never a weakness um yeah, I, I think a lot of the grip guys need to focus and, and girls need to focus more um, completely on their overall strength. They need to be working on their just their squats, deadlifts, you know, your, your classic power lifts, just to bring up their overall base of strength. And um, and then similarly, a lot of the strong men, strong women athletes, um, just for their sport specifically, and powerlifting as well, um, need to focus more on their grip work because their bodies are immense. They can squat and deadlift just about anything. Strong men, you kind of get a bit of a pass on that because you can often use straps in a lot of the events, but then you come to things like farmer's walk and whatever, and you can't. But your powerlifters, they'll, they'll lose meats because they dropped the deadlift because their grip wasn't up to par, even though they can pull 900 pounds. And it's it's um, it's something. So I think across the board, everybody needs to cross-pollinate a bit more with their training. The, the grip people need to focus more on their overall strength um and it's not going to be to the detriment of your hand strength that's not going to go anywhere it's probably going to get better um and and yeah your strength athletes on the other end of the spectrum need to put more work into their into their grip specifically um and it doesn't have to be like you need to do seven days a week of arm lifting like oh, no. it's, it's literally add one or two sessions in with some accessories you know a couple of days a week in your regular programming um yeah i'm i'm always into the guys and girls from both sides of the thing about that be more rounded as an athlete overall yeah. Well, I think you and I have similar backgrounds to me at a lower level, but I did, you know, shot put and discus extensively yeah. in college and post collegiate. I've done yeah. Highland games. I've done strongman. I've done a lot of powerlifting. And then yeah. I found my way into arm lifting. Uh, yeah. And I always knew in deadlift, I might not have the strongest back there, but I always knew what I could pull and I wouldn't drop it. So yeah. that ever, yeah. ever. So that yeah. was uh, always for me an exciting thing because I'd watch the guys who were close to me in position and I'd see, all right, well, how can I, can, are they having trouble gripping it? And you've seen yeah. it yourself. Some guys in warm ups, it's not looking too pretty. And no, uh, it's not. Yeah. No. And you don't want something as, as silly as like your hands let go on a deadlift to cost you a meet or a, or a contest, like when it's something you can really remedy. Um, and, and for me with it, knowing that I can deadlift, you know, over 800 pounds and having to walk up to a 500 pound axle deadlift, it's, I don't even think about the deadlift part of it. It means I can just focus on the grip part of it in, in competitive arm lifting. It's, it's, I think it's such a bonus for me being able to do that. Whereas I know some other guys, you know, their, their hands are immense, but they're 500 pounds, for example, you know, I keep saying that number because I, it's where it really begins, but like 500 pounds, um, I know they're also thinking, shit, am I going to be able to deadlift this today as well as their hands hanging on? Whereas I walk up, I don't even think about the deadlift. I'm just like walking up and picking it up. So, and, you know, guys like Carl and, and Kim are the same. You know, they're the big axle deadlifters as well. They're not thinking about it because they're also deadlifting well over 700, 800 pounds, you know, at, at their peaks. And so it's it's not a factor. So being stronger overall, it's it's silly not to work everything, yeah. Yeah, I, I, I firmly agree. And, and the clients and people I help or come to train with me, I, I tell them straight up, hey, you got to get stronger. Like you're overall yeah. human. You need to get stronger because yeah. it, it seems like you're like, oh, OK, I can put 50 pounds on my axle, 50 pounds. That that could take a whole lifetime. I, the people yeah. don't realize what it what it really goes into getting the grip the way it is. It yeah. It, yeah, it's immense. So let's yeah. talk about arm lifting in Australia. When are we going to yeah. get me to go down there? What, what do you think? <laughs> I, know, I know you're on my case about that. Yeah. Um, yeah, look, I'd, I'd love to have something out here in 2024. Um, I'm I still keen to work towards that. Probably probably mid to late next year, we could get something going down here. Um, and hopefully we could bring a bunch of you international guys in and, and girls. Um because there's some people are starting to rumble a little bit here. I think with myself, Jeremy, and and um, a few of the others starting to take greater interest and in, and in seeing greater exposure for the grip side of things. And there's definitely a bunch of guys and girls I know in the strongman world here that would would transfer across nicely. 
Um, I, I think there's definitely room for it to really jump off over here the way it is over in the States and, and Europe. So no, absolutely. Let's, um, let's keep working towards 2024 and, and have an event out here. Yeah. Well, I, I've never been down under. I would love to go. I've, it's yep. a place that I've always wanted to visit, um, to go and lift in addition to being yep. a tourist would be fantastic. I would yep. do the lifting first and the touristing second, <laughs> but yeah. Uh, yeah. I mean, to me it, to go down to Sydney and, and just look at your beautiful culture and all the cool things and wildlife yep. that you guys have that are unique that nowhere else has it in the world. Yeah. It, for me, it would be fantastic. So, and I'm sure there are people watching this video, Luke, that are like, "When do when do I buy my ticket?" So, <laughs> yeah, absolutely. And I mean, that's one of the amazing things about strength sports. It's it's really taken me around the world. Um, like I, I myself have competed in something like 20, 25 countries, you know, in various strength sports over the years. And I think that's one of the the really cool things that doesn't get mentioned so much in that. Um, we get the, the opportunity in strength sports to meet so many interesting people, uh, but we get to go so many interesting places and, and see so much of the world on top of being able to do the sport and itself. And, um, you know, I know Carl's been to Australia. I spoke to him when we were in, went back when he was throwing in his throwing days, but I would love to have him back out here and, and just let the Australian people see, you know, an athlete of that caliber in person and, um, and it'd be great to get the Swedes out here and all the, all the top Americans and, you know, the Russians and everybody it's, yeah, it, it'd, it'd be really something really cool here. And I think it would help kickstart the sport in a big way if we, if we got it out here. So I think, um, we'll definitely need to put a, an arm lifting Grand Prix out here. I think I, I, I will do whatever I can from however many 8,000 miles or whatever I am away. <laughs> I will do all yep. of it to help make it happen. Um, I will tell you this, Australia has some very talented lighter weight guys. Uh, Joe Hodgson, who's a middleweight, yeah. is is truly fantastic. Yep. There's this guy, Ben Cossey, Tom Denmead. These guys are yep. unbelievable. And I would just, uh, Glenn Hunter, there's another guy, Glenn Crutley. These yeah, guys are all, Glenn, yep. yeah, they, these guys are all good lifters and, I, w I know Australia, Americans don't realize how big Australia is. Some of us don't, but I know it's a yeah. huge continent with yeah. uh, far distances in between places. But Yeah, uh, it is. It's it's almost um, geographically as big as the contiguous U.S. And um, But whereas the U.S. is sort of populated right across the country, the middle of Australia is fairly inhospitable because a lot of it's desert and, and whatever. So you've got small communities, but all of our cities are situated around the coast, coast. Um, because that's sort of the livable zone, if you like. But so it, it means it's a long way between anywhere. Um, but there, yeah, a lot of those guys you mentioned, there's actually a really good sort of core of them in a bit of an underground grip scene here in, in just in Sydney. I'm, I'm outside Sydney. Um, and, and Joe Hodgson specifically, he's been sensational um, as oh. a friend and mentor for me entering this sport. He's been very supportive, but he, he knows so much about, you know, grip. Every, anytime I've had a question or he's even had me at his place training and teaching me lifts I've never even heard of. Um, because really, I'm I'm still very new to the the grip specific side, and um, yeah, no. So the, there's a great little scene here, and I'd, I'd love to see those guys get the opportunity to compete at those those bigger events as well. It's um, as we know, getting around the planet isn't so easy sometimes um, to get to those bigger events. So if we can start getting more of them here, um, that'd be sensational. But yeah, all those guys you you mentioned, I'm aware of, and, and a bunch more. I've met a few of them, lifted with a few of them, but Joe, Joe specifically, he's his hands are insane. Some of the some of the feats he does at his body weight, just you know, he he, go, he walk out, he did it again the other day. He hadn't touched it in like four months. He walked out, just picks up the Millennium dumbbell like it's nothing. I'm just like, man, it, it, that kind of stuff. I don't think people can really fathom it. I have, I still haven't done a Millennium dumbbell. I I broke his off the ground, and that was all she wrote. So I've still got to go back. I've got unfinished business there. But yeah, no. So I, I would love to see those guys in a competitive sense a bit more. It'd be it'll be great. Well, I, I can assure you they're all going to get an invite to Columbus, those guys. Yeah, excellent. Awesome. So that's, that's really I, cool. I realize the financial um, yeah. input, it may be beyond yeah. someone's means, and I, I don't want to put someone in that position, but if their goal is to lift in the United States, all they need to do is contact me, and yep. if they're up to par, 
there'll be yep. a space for them. It's that simple. Yeah, absolutely. And there's a few ladies starting starting to develop really cool grip um, and, and grip ability here. So I'd like to see some of those start to push in that direction as well. Um, so, you know, perhaps again, another, like a Grand Prix event here would be good because start to put them on the map uh, in exactly. the international sense. And then we can, yeah, it's, but yeah, it, it, the finances can be prohibitive, but the more the sport grows, the more it's going to attract sponsorship and, and more eyes on the sport, the, the more it makes it, I guess, accessible internationally for more and more athletes. So yeah, it's an exciting time, but like you said, 50% growth in a year is it's exponential. It's insane. You don't see that in any sport. So that's, um, that's really cool. Yeah, thank you very much for the compliment. I have been working, you know, I'm a high school yeah. teacher by day. I'm actually in my classroom right now because <laughs> my house is too noisy. But um, in my spare time, I have put many hours each yep. week into making yep. this grow. But from the YouTube channel to networking to making yep. more events in the United States. You know, this year, the Super Series, uh, we had 28 locations in 2023. Yeah. I would like yep. to hit 50 worldwide yep. locations for the Super Series. So yep. I think if people can think about hosting it and any barriers, call me and we will figure it out because the more athletes that compete, the the better the results are going to be the more sponsors um yep. everything is good so yeah. we just want to keep more and more locations more and more eyes on the sport is always a good thing um but yeah and that's it uh, people need to realize that how hard it is to do what you do and and you're you're also a normal person with a job and a family and a you know and a life as well of your own and 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 pouring the amount of hours it is into being a promoter and, and organizing and, and being the president of an organization like that it, it, it's very difficult so um yeah i think people need to just remember that as well it's um it's, it's really cool and without you it doesn't exist so it's like you know we all need to get behind it absolutely Thanks, Luke. Yeah, I mean, people don't realize that I don't want to be negative to any one sport, but there were mm -hmm. many sports at the Mr. Olympia this year that were cut. Highland Games was cut. Other things are getting cut because it's they're all battling for space. And if we don't get the draw, if we don't have the people, the inertia, yeah. the, the the ticket sales, the the lunch yeah. sales. I mean, on the sport. yeah, yeah. It, 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 if you're not winning, you're losing. And yeah. Arnold was the same thing. They, they had more sponsors for 24. So that means yep. there were less places for athletes to compete. And so that requires a reorganization of the venues and everything. So we'll see when yeah. the dust settles, but I'm really proud of the product we put forth in 23. We couldn't have yep. done it without you. Um, and your fellow athletes, and I, I, I just, I just can't wait to see the growth in 2024. Yeah, no, I'm looking forward to it. And like, like we spoke about earlier here, um, the the caliber of the athlete that you're able to draw there, and the standard of the competition, and, and just the whole, the whole thing, like it's, it's the Arnold, right? So that's the reason I'm aiming for that again in March. Like, you know, there's, there's, there's other opportunities and again, finances and things like that. I'll be, I'll be more actively doing some of the other internationals next year as well. Um, but for now, right now, my goal again is to come back to the Arnold and I'm, I'm not coming back for third place. Just a heads up to everybody watching. <laughs> um, we've already got that one. We're going to climb the ladder. So, um, but yeah, the Arnold, the Arnold for me is where it's at right now because that's where the deepest competition is. Uh, obviously you're nearing the 300 pound mark on the three by four Saxon bar. I'm sure you'd yeah. like to smash that on the big stage for everyone to see what, what yeah. are you going to, regarding the axle? What, what do you think? Look, um, I've, I've actually pushed the axle back in priority at the moment, just because I have hit those big numbers, you know, well over 500 and numerous times and right. 500 competitively. Um, I, I'd like to, to, you know, be up there chasing that world record again with the guys. I know Kim's been doing some just outrageous things. Um, and, and once Carl's injury free and sort of back, you know, the sky's the limit for both those guys. But as, as far as I'm concerned, Carl is still always the guy to chase. Um, he's captains of crushed the thing the other day with the, with the four being the only credit card set guys. Just, I, I picked up a few of mine the other day. I was like, man, I, I just don't like, Oh, you know, I hit, triples on a number three any day of the week there's no way i'm doing a four like i just it's, it's carl is in a different different level there you know um 
but yeah, with the, the Saxon has been a really interesting one for me because when I hit the Arnold this year, it was actually a very new lift to me. I'd, I'd done some work with Joe. He'd really helped me with some technique with it, which allowed me to get to the 110 mark number, which was enough for me to hang on the third overall. Um, but since then, obviously, you've seen me put in a lot of work on that. I've got my own Saxon and, you know, put in a lot of focus on that because I thought there's a lot of room there, a lot of meat on that bone that I could, I could grab a, a lot more poundage out of. And, right. and so far, I'm sort of, I'm really, like you said, I'm sort of knocking on, I'm hitting that 280 mark. Um, and I'm still, I'm still eyeballing Carl. Like Carl's always the mark. Like, you know, he's at the 300 right. pounds. I, I'd love to be the next guy to go 300. Um, and, but I know there's a few other guys that are sort of knocking on there as well. You know, got Jason, Jason's doing some very big numbers on, on the Saxon as good. well. Yeah, no, he's a sensational athlete. So, um, I'd, I'd like to make the most improvement on the, on the Saxon, I think, but yeah, if, if, if the axle's there, I I'd love to get close to that 250 mark and, and nail that in, uh, nail that in competition. Well, yeah. it's it's certainly possible and as hard as you work. And I think you're a testament to consistency because you put it out on the Internet. You don't miss workouts. That's one reason why you're a champion. Another reason is up here. You know yeah. that you're in for battle and you were mentally prepared for the Arnold. I saw you competing and you you were very focused. And uh, I have yeah, no I doubt it. I have no doubts you could have done that 507 again three or four days later. You you, you were yeah, ready. I was, I was to be honest, I was really happy with what I brought to the Arnold. I um sometimes traveling that far and um showing up a week early to sort of get used to it and just just feel ready. Um I, I think I really nailed showing up there and and the marks I hit that day, I couldn't have done any better. So taking third is as far as I'm concerned, that day is exactly where I should have landed. I didn't make any mistakes. Um, I hit the numbers I kind of had in my head and, and everything went really well. So if I can do that again, but obviously bring in a stronger, more experienced package, it's, it's I'm excited to see what I can bring. And and like I said earlier, the reason I chase the Arnold is because I'm chasing the deep lineups. I'm chasing the big lineups with the best in the world. I'm not just doing competitions for medals and things like that. I don't care if I come last, if I'm against the best guys on the planet, you know what I mean? So I, I even with Strongman, I've always chased those big lineups with the best guys to, to test myself. That's always been my attitude. I want to be against the best. So because that makes all of us better, right? You know, I, I get better, they get better. We all push each other. So, it, you know, then we really see crazy shit like we saw at the Arnold where <laughs> there's records being broken left, right and center. It's just, it's insane. So, um, yeah, that's what I like to see and, and that's what I'd like to do. But, um, yeah, it, it is a testament to consistency. 16 years I've been doing this. I've been, I'm, I'm 38 years old. I've been lifting for 25, 26 years now um, overall. Uh, but I've been in strength sports for 16 years, which in these sports is a long time, really, because the way we get banged up and the amount of surgeries and, you know, we get busted. Um, but if you can just keep chipping away and keep chipping away and, and stick with it, uh, you know, maybe if you're new to it, maybe next year isn't when you hit your peak. But, you know, maybe plan for a 10-year 10 10 year journey and, and let's see what you can do in 10 years and see if you can stick around because that's when you really hit some big numbers. Well, I think... You know, that has me motivated to go back and do a second workout today, Luke. That, Absolutely. But that's what it's that's all it. about. Yeah. yeah. We, we all have obstacles. Uh, I have no shortage of obstacles myself. Yep. And, yep. Uh, and and guess what? I wake up in the morning, lace up my shoes, and I'm back in the garage. So that's, it. It, yeah. yep. that's how it's done. So yep. I want to thank you for taking the time to – uh, talk with us here and share your expertise. I uh, wish you the best of luck in your training. Um, I think you need to round up the fellas and say, fellas, we need to have the Americans come over and I'll yeah. put my money where my mouth is. I'll be the very first <laughs> one to sign up. Yeah, love it. Now we'll make sure it happens. 2024, everybody get ready. You're coming to Australia and we're going to do the uh, arm lifting super series out here. But um, thank you so much for having me on, Ricardo. And apologies it's taken so long. You asked me months ago. <laughs> Um, but okay. I'm glad we finally lined it up. Good things come to those who wait. I've learned to be patient. <laughs> yeah, All right, Luke, well, you, you have a wonderful training session. I will talk to you later. Thank you so much. Thanks, Ricardo. I'll talk to you soon. Bye. Bye.